Good morning, folks. We're doing some data analysis on the Hawaiian volcano. We've got deadly storms, increasing space radiation, and a look at the cosmos. We also have eruptive activity on our star, so let's start there over at spaceweathernews.com. We're coming initially to 193 angstroms of light from ionized iron in the corona. Not much to see at first, no sunspots, no solar flares, and the solar wind has calmed considerably, along with geomagnetic conditions. But with the coronal hole stream potentially on its way from the now departing northern opening, does look like another arm to the polar extension is wrapping behind that brighter region too. Let's come back to 171 angstroms for a moment to make sure you do catch the eruptive behavior. It's that plasma filament we mentioned yesterday, and it did indeed have its coronal exodus. Coronagraphs from Lasco aren't updated yet, but that one's going to miss Earth. Let's use Mount Merapi to kick off a volcano discussion. It did go off again yesterday, by the way. But what I want to do is focus on Hawaii. One struggles with conflicting feelings of horror at the losses and awe at the power of the planet. Now that the flow has reached the ocean, there is a surge of toxic gases in the region as well. The key point this morning is on the seismic wave side of things. When just looking at magnitude 4.5 and higher events, we have undergone a 100% shift from true earthquake activity at the crust to only explosive volcanic eruptions at the surface. This gives confidence in two things, that a major eruption will be picked up and reported with the service, and that a collapse or catastrophic slide of the southeastern flank would show up on the quake feeds too. That's about as good of news of warning as you can get. Bad news in Africa, where Yemen, Somalia, and Djibouti all saw effects from that cyclone that drove out of the North Indian Ocean, 15 dead confirmed so far, and rising. Let's get a spot of positivity because the rest of the news is like the first part. Water levels in the Aral Sea showing tremendous recovery since just last year. Always nice to see things like that. Now on to this. Dr. Tony Phillips, one of NASA's top solar physicists, while we operate the data and graphics site spaceweathernews.com, he does the blog spaceweather.com and has my jealousy over the name. But his crowning achievement is with the kids and their contributions to the ongoing radiation environment understanding as we approach the modern cosmic ray maximum. Dr. Phillips has encouraged people to look into Earth's weakening magnetic field as well, and today we are reporting their latest readings confirming the trend towards that maximum in cosmic energy input as both the flux from our star and protection from the universe in the magnetosphere weaken considerably. Last bit of news comes from the preprint archive at Cornell. Despite the name of the paper, I'm not sure using just gamma bursts will give you an answer as they do attempt to do but their observations do allow for good guesses about the reionization period of the cosmos and also that a prevailing theory of galactic-type dominance during that period is likely incorrect. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps, water run on Null School, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.